This may look like a kit because of all the parts that are around here, but when I assemble it, this will become a fully automatic injection molding machine capable of just pumping parts out hour after hour. This is a project I'm about to start on. What you're seeing here are the various pieces of an Arberg automatic injection molding machine, fully automatic. What that means is that once I set it up, it'll just turn, turn out parts on a cycle. Now, this machine I purchased in pieces. I know it was functioning before I purchased it. The nice thing about purchasing it in pieces is that each of these pieces is light enough that I can carry it around by myself. When you put them all together, it becomes quite heavy. So I've started to put things together. The first thing I wanted to do is to make sure that I had a mobile base. And the advantage of using a mobile base is that I can easily reposition this in my shop in different places. That's one of the rules that I have. Everything in here, you know, this uh, bandsaw, the Morgan in the back, Everything needs to be on wheels so I can reconfigure my shop as I figure out what the optimal layout is and as I get new machines. Let me give you a little bit of an overview of this machine. So there's the stand right here. And then there are these shelves here. And I definitely need to do some work with these because uh, there are screws that uh, hold it in place. But the threads are in bad shape. And so I need to get new screws and I need to get new nuts so that if I lean on this, which I've done more than once, it doesn't fall off or hit me in the face. Let me give you an idea of the different things here. So this is the clamp uh, that clamps the mold halves together. One of the interesting things about this machine is that this clamp, which fits into here, can be put into either the vertical or the horizontal position. If it's in the vertical position, then the mold halves go like this. And you can't really do fully automatic because the parts can't fall out. But you can inject through the back of the mold like I do on the Morgan. If you put it into the horizontal mode, then you are doing party line injection. So when the mold halves separate, the part drops down. There is one feature of this machine related to fully automatic that has a chute with a sensor at the bottom to determine when the parts fall so that the mechanism that does the cycling can ensure it doesn't cycle if the part doesn't fall out of the mold. I don't have that chute, so I will probably have to make something to put on the bottom, and then I don't have the mechanism that detects the part falling either. I'm guessing what I'm going to do is to create an optical fan, which I think will be more reliable than a mechanical mechanism to determine when it drops. Here's a close-up of uh, the clamp. Uh, well, let me get my knee out of the way. So the clamp has a cylinder, and then there's a toggle clamp that will move these two halves apart. And then on the, on the back, there are some screws that allow you to adjust for different mold widths. Here in the back is the injection unit itself with the, uh, the cylinder, and then there's a hopper for plastic. So I need to get all of that put back together and up and running. Here's the control unit, and uh, this is uh, pretty old. In fact, you know, this control is, is seized, so it probably doesn't work. I'm not planning to use this anyway. What I want to do is replace this old electromechanical system with a modern touchscreen that has a temperature controller built into it, and basically you can set things like cycle time, uh, hold time, various other attributes, uh, part counter, etc., and be able to save profiles of different molds into memory. So I'm going to replace this with a much more modern system, which is great because I've been looking for a microcontroller project. And the screen that I've chosen for this is something called a Nextion, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, screen that will make it really easy to, to build the control system. This right here, is a guard, finger guard, so that it'll go over here, this mechanism, and keep your fingers from getting caught into the clamping mechanism, which would be a really bad thing. 
And then there are various other parts in boxes here. So a lot of what I need to do is, is sort through the parts, look at various diagrams, look at other YouTube videos, and try to figure out what goes where and reassemble it. There's also this uh, mold base system, I think that's what this is, that came with the machine. So you bolt this into the machine. I'm gonna need to figure out how that works. I think there are two bolts here, right there and right there, that hold it in one side. And then on the other side, there are these two bolt holes. So this is a pretty cool system because it's uh, a mold base. And so there are these uh, plates here that go into these slots. And then there are the molds like this that you can then screw onto the mold base. I'm not sure which way it goes, um, but you get the idea. So it'll hold it in place and then you uh, have a mold plate that goes in the other side and then this will screw onto it as well. It seems like it's a little bit tight right now, so I probably need to uh, cut a little bit off of each side or I'll have to check the bolt patterns and see how it's supposed to go in there. But that's a uh, pretty cool system because it means it's you can make uh, these molds and uh, easily uh, take them in and out of the machine and they'll be registered and you can just switch between the different molds. The next thing I'm gonna do on this project is clean it up. Once I have it cleaned up, to get rid of the accumulation of dirt and grease, etc., from the years. I want to make sure that it, mechanically it's working correctly. So I want to hook up some manual controls probably for the pneumatics, uh, make sure the heater's working, make sure that the clamp is working, the injection is working. Once I've got all of that working, then I will replace the the valves that came with us with modern mechanical, electromechanical valves that I can control via a microcontroller. Now, in parallel to that, I'm gonna start working on the user interface uh, for the Nexteon display. That's something I can uh, do on the computer. Once I have the interface that I'm happy with, then I'm going to start uh, hooking up the, the display to the electronics that will be controlling the machine. Please help me grow my channel by subscribing, give me a thumbs up, commenting below. And if you are a subscriber already and want to be notified when I have new videos, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.